In the last video, we saw how the idea of Fourier series can be generalized to non-periodic functions, yielding what is known as the Fourier transform, which we usually denote by f of k, given a variable x. And we can also define the inverse Fourier transform uh, as uh, this integral over here. Notice the main difference besides this being integrated as a function of k and this being integrated as a function of x is this one has a negative sign in the exponent whereas this one has a positive sign. By convention, if the variable of our function is time, usually denoted by t, then we take as our Fourier transform variable uh, the letter omega and we can define analogous Fourier transform pairs in this variable space. In this video, we'll go through computing an example of Fourier transforms. So for this example, we have the following function. At any time less than zero, our function is just equal to zero. And for any time bigger than zero, it's just a exponentially decaying function. So if we were to plot this as a function of time, at any time less than zero, our function is zero. At time is equal to zero, it's equal to a, which is just a constant, and then it decays exponentially like so. And we would like to compute the Fourier transform of this function. So the Fourier transform is given by f tilde omega following our convention for the variable names. And again, following our convention for Fourier transforms for which we associate the factor one over two pi with the Fourier transform of the function f of t. We need to compute this integral over here. And plugging in our function, we get our constant a coming out of the integral. At any negative time, our function is just zero. So we only need to consider uh, zero as our new lower bound. And this goes all the way to infinity. And then we have the factor in our function e to the minus lambda t. We can combine the two exponents. Like so. And then perform the, the integration. Remember the integral of an exponential, you get the argument of the exponent in the denominator and you recover the integrand at the top. And this is evaluated from infinity to zero where I've switched the limits of integration because we picked up a negative sign. So I included that already. And this leaves us with the following expression for our Fourier transform. All right, so what does this mean? One interpretation of the Fourier transform is in terms of something called the power spectrum. which is the square modulus of the Fourier transform of a function, which in this case gives us something like this. And what this tells you is 
the frequencies that constitute or that make up our original function. And um, and to to illustrate this, we're going to consider a uh, an example where it's more uh, straightforward to observe this. <clears throat> 